I'm Raymond Douglas, and um, I have a practice in Beverly Hills, California, and been working in thyroid eye disease now for about 20 years as part of as the the primary aim of my practice and of my research, and so been working on the, both the basic science of thyroid eye disease, um, and some of those findings have led to the introduction of new medication and new therapies, primarily targeting the IGF-1 receptor therapies uh, for pa patients with thyroid eye disease. And we've run, um, you know, been the lead investigation uh, crew for most of the clinical trials that led to the approval of tepratumumab and continue to work with others to, you know, to further care for thyroid eye disease patients. The, one of the real problems with thyroid eye disease is that it's so diverse, so heterogeneous amongst patients. Um, some patients get it very young, and I've had some patients get it when they're 80. Typically, patients will get it in middle age, you know, in the 40s, 50s, 60s. But, you know, look, it can occur at any time. It is usually preceded by Graves' disease, an attack, an autoimmune attack on the thyroid. And that has um, implications because there's two receptors that the immune system attacks. One is on the thyroid and one is primarily on the eyes. And when the immune system attacks the eyes, it causes inflammation and tissue expansion. And for some patients, they just get bulgy eyes and not a lot of inflammation. And in other patients, they get tons of inflammation and maybe not as much bulging or they can get double vision. So really anything that causes tissue expansion, bulging, inflammation around the eyes with Graves' disease has to really be thought of and investigated for thyroid eye disease. Yeah, the patient journey to diagnosis can often be rather complicated because as you can imagine, you know, patients are often being treated or having symptoms due to thyroid malfunction. And that's, you know, really difficult for them to, to deal with because they might be hyperthyroid or their thyroid is, is too active or low, but then they start to get eye problems. And it's often mis misdiagnosed as allergies or as other things like that, that can, that are nonspecific. And so they'll often go from provider to provider looking for care and trying to find care before they really get a diagnosis. And this is on average has been about over a year before they um, sometimes can get diagnosed uh, with thyroid eye disease. The biggest clue is often if someone has a thyroid abnormality and that can be um, you know, both Graves disease or Hashimoto's and then add in any kind of eye difficulty, whether that be you know, redness that doesn't go away, bulging, or a little bit of a stare, something like that. Those two, that combination is a big tip off. But it also, it's very common for patients to say, my eyes look different. I have this stare. I have this um, chronic inflammation. Um, and so that, that really of itself is a huge tip off that, hey, maybe this isn't allergy. It, it's been around for a month, it's not going away. Then you really have to dive a little bit deeper and you can dive a little bit deeper just by doing some thyroid testing, um, you know, and some other, you know, a little bit of a history of patients and really kind of get to that diagnosis uh, fairly quickly. So current management is, is primarily medical and then in some late stage cases, surgical. So that, and that really has changed in the last five years. You know, before, you know, very little, uh, very few patients were managed medically because medication didn't reverse the disease. But now that we have therapies that can actually reverse the disease, not just hold it steady, but actually reverse many of the findings, reverse the bulging, reverse the inflammation that's occurring here, then that becomes something that um, has, has really taken off. Uh, still, there are patients that elect for surgery, and surgery is, is certainly, you know, very reasonable. And that's indicated to try just to overcome some of the appearance issues, some of the, if there's any impingement on the optic nerve, things like that to make more room behind the eye. It doesn't reverse the disease. It just kind of helps with the symptoms. You know, 
a, a milestone in the treatment of thyroid eye disease occurred um, in 2020 with the introduction of tepratumumab. And that was the first you know, you know, indication uh, of a medication by the FDA for treatment of thyroid eye disease. And now there's, there is uh, you know, a whole host of medications that in the next few years will either um, work on the IGF-1 receptor or other receptors associated in this disease pathogenesis. So it's really a, a, a great time into thinking about the emergence of, of therapies. And in, in such, there will also be um, potentially oral therapies and therapies that are easy uh, for patients to, to, both, to get. Uh, and if they have a reactivation, uh, also easy for any kind of future treatments um, for them. It's very exciting. You know, um, the, so the immune system attacks the IGF-1 receptor. And tepratumumab was innovative, and it blocks that receptor and blocks the activation. So it kind of turns down the thermostat of these cells. Sling um, uh, Therapeutics is now coming out with a molecule that's an oral therapy, and it's a small molecule. So instead of having to get an IV, you could actually take this as a pill. And it's a small molecule that does exactly the same thing, and it's targeted to this receptor to stop its activation. And so it's very exciting that, you know, there will be options for patients, hopefully in the relatively near future. So the FDA was very clear in, in telling us how trials should be conducted and moved forward um, for treatment of thyroid eye disease. And so the trial for SLING is also in a similar vein in that it's treatment of reversal of the eye bulging that's due to thyroid eye disease. And this is primarily in patients with active thyroid eye disease, and they're given a treatment with an oral medication. And 24 weeks later, look for improvement of that disease, meaning improvement of the eye bulging, and then other endpoints such as double vision, et cetera. And that trial is underway in, in, um, in over 20 centers around the world, you know, garnering exceptional enthusiasm. And hopefully, uh, in the next several months, uh, come to, to some conclusion in moving that, that phase forward. So the timeline of the trial is it's currently enrolling patients. Um, you know, and with trials, you know, it's always, you know, a matter of when uh, enough patients are enrolled to meet the enrollment criteria. And hopefully that, you know, will happen in the next few months. But, uh, you know, so, so there is opportunity for patients still to enroll in these local centers for this trial. And this will be the first of two trials that are needed by the FDA. Uh, so there will be a follow-up trial, um, in, in, you know, after this as a confirmatory uh, if, if testing is positive. I think the biggest thing for patients is that they have to understand that, uh, you know, a lot of patients are guilty, feel guilty about seeking treatment, feel that it's just a cosmetic disease, and it's really not. It impacts so many aspects of daily life. You know, patients, just 80% of patients are less willing to go outside, go do things, go out, uh, even enjoy a sunny day because their eyes hurt or they feel self-conscious. So the first thing is overcoming uh, the, the stigma or the guilt of seeking treatment. And, you know, in, in the past, we didn't have any treatments. So, but now there are, you know, really innovative treatments coming along that have, you know, very low side effects. And so it, it's really, you know, and a time for patients to bring this to the attention of their physicians and let them know that, you know, they'd at least like to explore or hear more about these treatment options.